uh, women in this country, we are supposed to listen, not to ask. No, we are we are kind of we are socialized in a way to do, you know, not to demand. And then girls who who defy those things, they say that why only I should follow, I can order too. Why I should only do, I I can order too. So so those you know so, so when when some girl start questioning, that is real threat for those who hold that power for for long. In Nepal is een vrouwenbeweging in opkomst. Nu er na jaren van oorlog een staakt het vuur is ingesteld, zien vrouwen de kans om op te komen voor hun rechten. We bezochten drie vrouwelijke mensenrechtenactivistes in Nepal. Women these days do stand out for themselves or actually stand up for themselves and I've actually realized with me taking as an example as well where women have come to know that they have their human rights as well which wasn't actually a part of their life earlier. Women started saying, okay, we should continue our own movement, and that's exactly what is happening at the moment. Tot 2006 woedde er in Nepal een gewapende strijd tussen de Maoïsten en het regeringsleger. Nu het conflict ten einde is, werken vrouwen aan de verbetering van hun situatie. 2005 was the was the time when the armed conflict was at its peak. And then we would hear a lot of different cases, stories about women being tortured, women being violated, different kinds of sexual violence that women uh, were facing in different communities. So we knew that even before the conflict there were such cases. But then during the conflict and after the cases, the number got higher, you know, it was risen. The situation of the women here in Nepal is like, you know, it's, it's, very, it's a very patriarchal structure and at the same time it's feudal. So women didn't have access to economic empowerment or economic resources as well. Women did not have rights to land rights or property rights, it's always men. So that is, with that whole structure, that's how women have been suppressed and dominated for such a long time. But now we are into a new Nepal, as we always say. Nepal is now in a new transitional phase, in a, mo in a new post-conflict time. Women got a space to speak more easily, and because democratic, at least certain democratic norms were set up, and after that women started to speak more strongly than they used to do before. April 2008 zijn er verkiezingen in Nepal waarna een nieuwe grondwet moet worden vastgesteld. Vrouwen grijpen dit moment aan om hun positie in het land te verbeteren. We organized a strong women's movement where, where there were, we had two demands. One was declare the dates of the constituent assembly and number two was a total full proportional system in the constituent election as well. So to actually include women into the peace process or into any agreements, it's very important that the role of the women should actually be focused on. When you have a peace process, there are like so many men sitting on the table and signing the agreement. Women are trying to be a part of the decision making and also uh, influencing the political structure and also influencing them into, through lobby and advocacy as well. Maar nu vrouwen mondiger worden, neemt het geweld tegen hen toe. Every action has a reaction. So far the men have ruled, so far the men have controlled women, but now women are saying that's enough. To kind of maintain their own status quo, to maintain or to preserve them as controllers, they would inflict violence on women and they have been so that women still stay at their place, their place, what men think their place is, down there, you know. We know of women that have been very active in community uh, being threatened. Some of the women were murdered, were killed because they were actively uh, pursuing for change. All these women who actually promote and protect women's rights, they receive death threats, which is a clear example of how women have actually been able to stand up for themselves. Violence is on the increase, but then again, women are there to counter it. 